Hi guys, today we're doing geometric series and sequences. Now, let us start by having an example of a geometric progression. Now, if you realize I have progression instead of sequence, progression is the same thing as sequence. Now, when we have a geometric progression or geometric series, to find the common ratio we divide, well, the first term, please view my other video with arithmetic progression. The first term is just the first value in the sequence. So this is considered to be a geometric progression. So that's why I'm saying yes, it is. Why? Now, before I go into why, just identify that A is 3. The first value is the first term, which is A. R, the common ratio we have to divide as I stated. You can either divide the second term by the first and you can also divide the third by the second and each time you divide you should be getting the same answer if you're not getting the same answer then it doesn't have a common ratio and it's not a geometric progression so when we divide the 24 by 12 we're getting the 2 48 by 24 i'm still getting 2. so indeed this is a geometric progression now let us do this question where we're asked to find the 50th term the 50th term means a common ratio and a please note this is the formula to find any term within a sequence for a geometric progression and here i know what is a is 3 r r is 2 n because this is a 50th term then n is 50 so I will be replacing n to be 50 minus 1 now to calculate we have 3 multiplied by 2 50 minus 1 that's 49 now calculating this we're gonna get an extremely large number so 2 to the 49 then you multiply by 3 and then that will give you 1.7 times 10 to the 50. And that is it. Now, when we're finding the sum, we have two formulas. The first one, as stated, is when r is less than 1. And then the second one that I'm writing here is when R is greater than 1. So it depends on what is a common ratio. We'll use the first one when R is less than 1 and the second one when R is greater than 1. This question now is asking the sum of the first 20 terms. So first the 20 terms tells me that N is equal to 20. Now looking at what is r, r is 2, so that means that I'm using the second formula. So having the formula Sn equal a is 3, r, r is 2, n, n is 20 minus the 1 all over 2 minus 1. Now, simplifying this, we can now work out the 2 minus 1 because that will be giving us 1 and it doesn't affect the numerator. So, calculating this, we'll have 3,145,725. And that is it. Now, the next example we have here, determine the fifth term and the sum of the first 20 terms of the geometric sequence. A is always the first value, which is 1 over 27. To find R, we have to divide. So we have to see 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 27. And so will be 3. We can also use the next two, which is a third and one over nine. So 
we can go ahead and divide. So we say 1 over 3 divided by 1 over 9. Then we change the division to multiplication. Then flip the 1 over 9 to be 9 and say 3 into 9 goes 3 times. So the answer again, we get 3. Now, we can ask to find a fifth term where n is 5 and a is 1 over 27, which is the first term. And uh, r is the same, which is 3. So to find the fifth term, we have to use a term formula, tn equal a r to the n minus 1. Substituting the values, we have a to be 1 over 27, r to be 3, and n to be 5, then you take away 1. Now calculating the power, we have 1 over 27, and then 3, 5 minus 1, that's 4, so 3 to the 4th. Then rewrite the 1 over 27 and 3 to the 4th, that's 81. So multiply by 81. Then reducing this, 27 into 81 goes 3 times, so the answer is 3. Now, same example, now we're going to find the sum of the first 20 terms. So this is just a reminder that this formula is what we use because r is greater than 1, it is 3. So a and r remains the same, so we substitute what is a and what is r. But n is 20 since we see 20 terms. So let's substitute. So the sum of the first 20 terms I know is 1 over 27. I know that r is 3, n is 20 because we see 20 terms. So we have 3 to the 20 minus 1 over r which is 3 minus 1. Now, so calculating the numerator, what we have is 129 million one hundred and 40,163 divided by 2 we have 64,570,081.48 points and that is it. Now, this next example is asked for the fifth term and the twentieth term of the geometric sequence. Here we have a to be the first term, which is 16, and r, which is a common ratio. We divide 8 by 16, and that will give us 0.5 or some places like to have it as a half. So you can also try this in the next two where you say 4 divided by 8 and you realize you're getting the same value which is a half. You have to get the same values when you divide. So 2 divided by 4 you will still get a half. So that makes it a geometric sequence because when I divide I am getting the same value. No. Using the term formula to determine the fifth term, just a reminder what it is, as you can see. N is 5, so I'll have T5 equal A, which is 16. R, that is a half. You could have used 0 0.5. And N again, which is 5, take away 1. No. 16, then I have a half to the 5 minus 1, which gives us 4, so it's a half to the power of 4. Having 16 times a half to the 4th is 1 over 16, 
and the 16 cancels so the answer is 1. Now you could have done it manually where you just see a half times 2 and that will give you 1. Since it is actually the fifth term, we already have the fourth, so the fifth one would be easier to find. So anyway, you'll get the answer. Now, we're also asked to find the sum of the first 20 terms. Since it's less than 1, we have to use the formula that is required when r is smaller than 1. Now, using this formula to find out the sum of the first 20 terms, substituting, we know n is 20, a is 16, and substituting what is r, r is a half, if you prefer to write 0 0.5, that is okay, and n again is 20, which is a power, so it's not a half times 20, but it's a half raised to the power 20, then we have 1 minus r again, which is a half. This is equal to, now the numerator you would calculate, so calculating the numerator will approximate it, so it's not exactly 16, but I've rounded it off to give us 16, while the denominator I'll subtract 1 minus a half to give me a half. So dividing this, the sum of the first 20 terms is 32, and that is it. Now the sum to infinity formula is a over 1 minus r, we use this when we are finding the total up to infinity, so an infinite amount of terms that we are adding. So looking at this example, we are going to find the sum to infinity. So this has infinite amount of terms. So the first thing we have to find out is what is a? a is the first value in this sequence, so a is 3. r, however, we have to divide to find r. So it's a second term divided by the first term, that is a third, or you could divide it, the third term by the second term, and you're still getting one over three. You could also use the fourth term, which is one over nine, divided by the third term, and we'll get 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 3 change 1 to multiplication then we reciprocate the 1 third so it becomes 3 so cancelling down we'll have the answer to be 1 over 3 so any case gives you a third so now we're going to find the sum to infinity. We know what is a and r, so just substitute it into the formula. We have a which is 3 all over 1 minus a third. So it's 3 and 1 minus a third, that's 2 over 3. Then rewriting this, we have 3 divided by 2 over 3. Now, once we change division to multiplication, we reciprocate the fraction, so it becomes 3 over 2. So the answer is just 3 3 is 9 over 2, or some persons will say 4 and a half. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe.